then, so, uh, my name's Matt, welcome back to the shop, and uh, we're back at this thing, I can hardly see me, hiya, <laughs> yeah. right then, uh, today, oh I can use the whiteboard as well, blackboard, whatever it's called, and my battery has just died from my microphone, so I can take this off, um, this is the second time I've recorded this video due to sound problems, which is fun. There we go. Right then, so, I haven't taken apart the front end yet, and the reason why is because, well, I'll show you the reason why. There is an issue. Um, it's an obvious issue, right? No one's going to be, oh my God. It was an issue that was always the case that I knew right from the beginning. And that issue is, that the top and bottom yoke so for those who don't know this bit here that your handlebars usually connect to that are always sometimes handlebars clip onto the shocks this top yoke here and this bottom yoke here hold your forks top and bottom and basically that's just its, its support right the spacing of this so the top and bottom the spacing of this is important because um the further away you can go, right, so the, where's my other hand, there's, the further away you can go along, right, the more support you have, but it depends how long you want your steering column, blah, 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 and the longer a steering column is with bearings, eh, and it also affects your travel, also gets in the way of your wheel, all that kind of rubbish. So this is the top and bottom yoke, should have started with this really, you see we've got a, a, a holy holy there. And a holy holy there and like i say the spacing now you can actually see on this this is a good example of them trying to get a bit more because they've kicked out the bottom so they're trying to get a greater spacing it's like i know it's simple but i'm just repeating so everyone's all can join in for the ride <laughs> the ride it's like this if i wanted to hold this up oh fuck me you see i can feel there's a lot of weight on this second hand and I'm basically pushing down like this to keep it up. Right, and this is my fulcrum in a sense. If I space it, but oh, if I do that, both ends, it's really easy. In fact, the further I go together, the more mass is going around this fulcrum point. So in a sense, you can think of your forks because they're at an angle like this. You can think of your thought, fork um, yokes as the same thing, top and bottom. Right, and like I say, you can see Yamaha with the R6 here opted for trying to get even further apart so the steering stem or basically the steering column section of the frame is x long but you're actually getting a bigger reach now you obviously don't want to come all the way down here because like i say you get into travel issues so it's a balancing act between everything any road what are important about these setups is the offset so the offset if i i'll just try and show you this one in the center here is where your steering column is so this is where your steering is if you can see that right that's your steering there yeah so where the center of these two the top and bottom yokes where the actual stanchions go fork bodies basically the line of the suspension this if you get an edge a straight edge just say like my big one here if you go across the center of the two this is not perfect i'm just doing it for camera if you go across the centre, you can see that there's an offset, and that's literally called offset, <laughs> believe it or not. This is an offset from the centre of here to the line that goes between the two of these. And how does changing offset change your steering geometry? Ugh. You can do it in two ways, actually. You can do it at the top. You can either do it at the bottom, where your fork bodies come down and they kick out. It's more of a push bike thing. Um, because of the forces in motorcycles, you want... The centre of the axis, the axle to go straight down the middle of the forks is generally what's required. Not all are like that though, some dirt bikes are offset, blah blah blah. Offset on its own, you might find websites and stuff will tell you offset does this. That is a bit of a lie. In other words, they might say something like offset um, controls the amount of caster effect, right, of the wheel. Eh, it... There's a difference between fork offset, steering offset, and there's a difference between your uh, rake and 
trail and your real trail versus your theoretical trail. There's also hyd uh, pneumatic trail. There's, it's really, really complicated. And just to give these base rules of this and this, you can quite easily... Um, undo those rules, as you can find an exception to the rule if you go to extreme circumstances. So if you have forks that are vertical, right? I know that doesn't really happen, but what I'm saying is, is that these are loosey goosey rules, kind of. It's like that. So just coming out with this does this and this does this, it's a bit like saying. Um, I'm trying to think. It's a bit like saying. It's a bit like saying. Um, hands are for manipulating things and feet are for standing on where there are people who can paint with their feet if you get what I mean there's circumstances where one will do the other and people can walk on their hands <laughs> you know what I mean um, and that's a shit example but I'm just trying to think of anything off the top of my head regardless there is this offset right so that offset is something to bear in mind and the reason why I'm going through all of these is because that's what these videos are for um, so this has an offset. So when we take this off, we can measure that offset. The offset uh, is not important right now. I've kept this all together so I can measure where these things are in relation to the bike before I take it apart. It, this is how it was put together. So this is how it was designed to work. I want to get certain measurements of this and then we can take it apart and look at other things. The fork bodies, uh, the stanchions, sorry, because these are conventional forks. The stanchions on these are uh, 41 mil. So these are 41 millimeter. And the hole in the top of this yoke, so these holes on the top and bottom yoke are exactly the same to except the original forks. These ones are 49, I think it's 49. It's a shit way to measure. Yeah, we'll call it 49 and a half because it's got a split ring in it and these are 52 just say you can measure them on the fork bodies actually i have the fork bodies let's just fucking do that um so our fork body give me it. our fork body here where is it mounted it clamps there and there so this one is 49 point something and up here it's 51.8 something they actually don't have to be whole numbers and the reason why they don't have to be whole numbers is about the tubing um, because you clamp right you're clamping on them so they don't have to be perfectly whole numbers and this is zeroed so yeah that's fine uh, and obviously the guestometers but they're not going to be a millimetre or two out so we have to chalk that's what we have to do we have to chalk so what we're looking for is we have, I don't know if you can know whether you can see this, we have our steering stem here, we have our two fork forks, we're doing the same because the bodies and stanchions, so we'll just call them the fork bits. So there's the distance here, this is important, we need to know that between the two, which will give us what's down here at our axles, and we need to know this line here. So that one there, we need to know that distance. I also, when you look on the side, you've got your top yoke, you've got your bottom yoke, and you've got your fork stanchion in this case there. I want to know this dimension. It's a bit different because what we're going to do here is these are totally different. Right? So I don't know how well it's going to show up. But these are spaced further apart. Yeah, these are spaced. Well, I'll be able to see from the measurements. Um, yeah, the centres are about three, 30 mil, three centimetres wider for the R6 for this. So these are too close together, these ones, which is in one way a good thing because that means that we can put wheel spaces in the bottoms. However, it also means that our brake discs are going to be out of alignment. So, the first thing we need to do is the brakes I'm not too bothered about because we can do things with the brakes to a degree. The brakes I'm not too bothered about, it's the yoke itself I'm bothered about. 
this um, st steering shaft here, this steering shaft will not fit into this, right? So what I mean is, is that this isn't a straight swap. We can't, I'm not trying to bolt these onto this. These yokes will carry them forks, right? But I would like to put them forks where these live. So in essence, what I would like is to put the forks exactly where these original ones, the OEM ones are. So in a sense, this is just because we need um, bit measurements and bits off this, right? This is actually, in a sense, useless. I just got these with the forks. Because um, he said, are you sure you, uh, uh, blah, 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 and it was a big conversation and I got him to chuck them in. So in a sense, what I want to do is I want to get this, oops, with the, the stanchion, right? And basically just go and just plop them in here. However, these are way too small and they cannot in any kind of way, there's no way to modify these to take these. As in the major diameter of this is literally the size of the collar so what i'm saying is is that if you take this ring these bodies are literally that size so there's no there's, there's nothing there right you just eat it away so what i want to do instead is get some custom yokes for this top and bottom use this steering column and use these shocks so like i said this this is in a sense no use it's just good for measurements right because we've got all the collars and blah 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 blah. what i want to do in a sense is make a custom yoke for this that fits this basically fits this steering column we're going to get this and take this bottom yoke off oem steering column we're going to pop that out so it's just the column on its own we're then going to press that column into the new versions the, the custom versions that go top and bottom but the top and bottom custom versions will accept these fork tubes the reason why we want to do that off the get-go just off the bat is then these fork bodies are in line with everything right with the wheels and everything it's the center line of them all great however the problem comes with our brakes because these OEM ones are your usual fork side mounted arrangement, right? They're not radial calipers, they're offset calipers. Where our fork bodies, um, the bottom yoke part, the, the axle part, they will carry the radial mounted jobbies. So what we need to do is position these tubes, position these tubes in the right place where our calipers line up because you can space an axle with us you can get a spacer and make it a bit thicker or a bit thinner that's easy it's just a spacer so you can clamp everything and everything's parallel brake discs no you don't want to do that kind of shite so what i want to do is in a sense twofold i want to find out where the disc is from the center line of this fork so luckily we've got a bolt down here. I'll bring you in in a minute and then we'll basically, and luckily the discs aren't dished, thank fuck for that, which will make this whole process a little bit easier. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move the camera and chuck you in to this bit so you can see what the fuck's going on. We're down at the wheel. Hello wheel. My coffee here. So what we've got, luckily, is there's a bolt here. You can't see it, but it's just a clamping bolt, right? There's a split in here and you clamp it. We can use, in a sense, the centre of that. There's also two flats here. If you look at that there, you'll see that the holes, because they're fucking not stupid, the hole here and the hole at the bottom are in the centre. So what we can do, in a sense, is just grab this with the calipers, like this, and find out that that's 28 millimetres it's 28.1 something right which means that if we go oh fuck 28 let's go 14 right get 14 on these 
and then just put that either you, it's a shame you can't butt that against there but now I can see that it's pretty much bang on the centre right fucking wonder bar yeah so what I need to do then I can use this surface I can use this back surface or anything what I can do it's a shame I should go and get a smaller scale but I didn't and I'm down here already is I can stick this just against oh I forget it's not it's just shy oh no there's one I knew I brought one with me a small scale a smaller scale and then I can butt that against there and go oh look it's x amount of what is it all right now that would be the clamp of the bearings and everything what I really want and this is in a sense our problem we measured this Right, this section here actually let me go and get what I need um, where are they I'm going to have to do this I spent time degreasing these but fuck it we'll just degrease them again we've got these right and this is the inside the scratch side this is the nice side on the outside so what we're trying to do Let's go and get the other one, just so we can, just so it looks correct. It's all right, they're on plastic. And I've got an oven bloody shelf here that's going to rattle. Put that in the oven, where it belongs. There we go. Stop ringing. Something's ringing. Stop it. Right, so we have the correct side. This side. Well, we don't. It would be that side like that. Oh, I had the fucking right. Oh, I know why. I, <laughs> I wanted to just stick this here. So in a sense, that's what we're trying to do, right? We're trying to stick this in here like this. Then have the calipers in the correct place. Now... This has a protrusion on the inside, right? So we've got to basically account for all of that, right? To make sure that this doesn't butt against anything stupid, whatever. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to, because that is about center line, as is, and this is already encroaching on basically the bit of the wheel. So obviously they're going to have to come out a bit. But then that begs the question is where are our calipers going to go? So if you get the caliper, so here's the caliper, and we basically stick that on like so, right? And then obviously I'm going to bolt it. We can actually see where everything lines up. So how the hell would you work out all this? You can sit here forever and do drawings. <laughs> Oh, fuck's sake. Right, where was I? Um, oh, yeah, so all I need to do is, and I don't have to be, it doesn't have to be the world's most accurate model. I need to CAD this up. So I need this thickness, this thickness, anything that space, the space is in a sense in here, and the distance from the end of this surface to the actual disc, the thickness of the disc. That's all I need. I need to make a model of that. Then I need to make a model of this, which is basically this center right so the center of this to the center of this how in a sense how thick this is and where these holes are in relation to everything and how far across they are to everything you know what i mean and i've got the caliper as well so what i want to do is i want to mock up the basics of where everything is and that's what the second part of this video is um so yeah see you in a second soft plastic edges the soft soft plastic edges hard no not soft hard plastic edges hard.
doing here, uh, which is making a very basic mock-up of the um, axle mount, this thing, the caliper axle end of shock mount thing. Um, let's actually colour these just so they're a bit easier to separate. Uh, we'll just call this blue, that'll do. And then the caliper, oh no, I don't do the caliper because I don't do the disc. Well, you can see it there, right? That's all good. Um, so what I've got here is a space envelope, you could call it a space envelope in a sense. It's an alignment jig or an alignment model. It's a representation of the main axle, um, where the actual shot goes in. And then obviously where this mount is, how far away it is, stuff like this, these lines, how far they are, blah, 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 blah. And uh, not only that is it's where it sits in alignment. As you can see that this is offset, you know, from here to here. It's 18 millimetres offset. And um, b -b 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 from centre line of here to the centre line of this axis. And that's where the caliper sits. And the caliper, again, it's just a mock-up. What I wanted to get in the caliper mock-up was I measured the centre line of these holes to the where the disc would fit. Uh, I'll put up a picture. And basically all I did is I jammed in loads of scales, basically fucking rulers, just jammed them all in until the, the pads sat against the pistons, which give me... You know, I used one of the scales in the middle and measured that against the edge of one of the dowels and then measured the diameter of the dowel and half that to get the centre line of, of, of this. So that's approximately where the disc sits. Underneath, inside the bottom of the caliper, I'll again do a picture, there's these two bits. Forget all this rubbish. There's like uh, these, these sections, these profile sections here um, that basically... You've got to get that right, right? If you get it wrong, right? And you've got to remember, this is all aligned. <laughs> How the caliper sits on here to the disc, not the not the pads, nothing like that. How the caliper body there sits to the disc is defined by these holes and the dowels, which is defined by this, and this is defined by where the shockler sits, which is defined where the yoke goes. So... That's where you've got to get that all right, and you've got to make sure that you you are getting this right because a millimetre one way, a millimetre the other, you know, this is a five millimetre disc. What is the clearance between there and there? Um, it's one and a half millimetres, that clearance, with your disc in there. Right Now, I've gone for a five millimetre disc. You know, this disc here is five millimetres. Uh, oops. Fuck's sake. I don't know what the disc is. I should go and check. Oh, what am I doing? Stop it. Clicking on fucking what is it? Five millimeter disc. If it's a four millimeter disc, then you get, you know, two millimeters clearance. But it's not much. I've literally got my calipers here. With the piss the caliper sat right in front of me. The gap between there and there is 8.5. So is that what I'm reading here? It should be. Eight. I've got eight point five because reasons, right? Eight point five in there, and um, I actually know that's because that's the sorry, that's the wrong side. This one is a bit of a weird one because it's got a bit of a step to it. What's that say? Yeah, that's eight point two two, right? Because calipers, because castings, because blah 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 blah. Right, it's not perfect. Where the model, you know, is bang on. I always want to undercut it. So I the smallest reading I could get was eight millimeters, or close to eight millimeters. So I always go small when you go for tightness, uh, small clearances, stuff like that. So I always go for the smallest. Um, so you know I've stuck the disc in where it theoretically should be, right? So this is the whole point. What you do is you build this, this is the R1, R6 bit, this is the R6 bit, and this is theoretically, it doesn't matter if the disc is dished or anything, it doesn't matter, I want to know where this disc actually sits, right? And where this sits compared to this, the bottom body. So when I measure that on here, oh, I'll just go through the hole, fuck it, there, like that, right? I've got a 10 point there, that's what I'm bothered about, that one. Uh, 10.5 millimetres, 
right? So a centimetre. I've got a centimetre clearance between the face of the disc and the inside of the fork. Oh, fuck's sake. Why does it do that? I hate when it does that. It just disappears because uh, you've clicked in the wrong region or something. Any road. So, yeah, that's what I'm more bothered about because, obviously, Yamaha know that this clears um, from here. You know what I mean? And if you see, actually, if we look, if we get a good view, that's our clearance there. You know what I mean? It's not incredibly brilliant, you know. This is uh, 10.5, but I imagine that that face there and there, you know, going to give me a minimum. Oh, I'll just do disc there. Where's minimum? There. So the no, oh, it's not even there, is it? Really? You're not giving me. Oh, can I do point to point? Where's point to point? Point to point. So there to there. Right. It's not even fucking perfect there, is it? It's about six. Right. It's so the six mil clearance between this caliper and the disc, um, which. It's not much, you know what I mean? We're getting tight in there. Obviously, this is getting silly tight in here, but that should, that's where it sits. So, um, what I'm going to do next, and what I haven't got time to do now yet, is I need to take the last final measurements off there before I take it all apart, which is basically just rake and trail and all that shite. I just want it down. Once I've got the rake and trail and blah, 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 I can get out of the book, but I want to measure it as it sits on the bike. Once I... And the other thing is, like, brake lines and stuff like that. Once I've got that all sorted out, and obviously this is an angle, doesn't matter, we don't care about that, right? We can do this upright, because what we're doing is a comparison. What I'm going to do is measure... Uh, make a CAD model, a very quick, basic CAD model of where the caliper, uh, the fork leg, so this bottom bit, which would basically be the end of the fork body, how that mounts to the caliper and where the caliper sits and the brake disc for the XJ. And then what we're going to do is, in a sense, is I'll have, I'll have two assemblies, so this assembly here and another assembly. And what I'll do is I'll put the discs, you'll, that'll be in the next video, I'll put the discs in exactly the same place. Right? That's what I'm going to do, is put, just basically make the discs so they're in exactly the same place. I'll even make the discs the same size. Just as a comparison, I've literally this isn't an R1 disc, this is a XJ disc, um, it's a 300mm disc. What I'm going to do is just basically superimpose them on top of each other and then you'll be able to see, I'll colour these bits blue and I'll colour the, um, like I said, I'll just colour this fucking blue or something, a different shade of blue but a blue nonetheless and then what we'll do is we'll have the... Um, XJ in red or green or something, something that's easily contrastable, and you'll be able to see the alignment differences because it's the disc that I'm more bothered about. Right? The disc is what I care about, and we'll, we'll be able to see what's what. And this is the whole point, right? You do this totally independent. I build this independent of this. I just build these off the dimensions I'm getting, and then when I put them into the model, I'll just see if they fit together. Will these fit together? They should do, you know, because really it's only this bolt dimension here that matters in alignment with these two, you know what I mean? But everything clears and everything looks hunky-dory, you know what I mean? And what we're going to do is do the same with the XJ, not just completely forgetting about this. Do a same right-hand side like this. Um, left-hand side, sorry. Do a same left-hand side like this and then basically just superimpose them over the top of each other. And I'll be able to see that using the disc as our datum, where is the shock body, where is the caliper, where does everything sit? And then, based on that, um, you can then start to say, well, what do I need? I need to make sure that this bottom is 4 millimeters further in or 6 millimeters further out kind of thing. And then I'll make sure that the wheel spacer that I need is, you know, from this disc surface... So basically you'll measure from this disc surface on the XJ how far does the, you know, where is the shock body and what's the clearance between the two, that kind of shite. Um, I know this might seem to some people like a lot of fucking round, but all I have to do to make the R6 front end um, fit this, right, 
fit this perfectly is to have the top and bottom yoke machined up and then that's it right so i'll basically just press out get take the xj apart press out the steering column right you could even cut the fucker out i don't need the yokes for the xj and you'll never sell it well you probably never sell the fuckers because you're missing the steering column right the actual the steering stem um so once i take the steering stem out of the steering column i know i'm talking shite once you've got the steering stem out right you can cut it out whatever you can press it out usually but just cut it out or what have you and then what i can do is i can install that into the new yokes so you know that your new top and bottom yokes will fit the frame, no problem. They'll just flop, slot straight in because they'll have the same steering stem. And as long as you've kept it, well, actually, the steering stem on the XJ defines everything, right? It's the nuts and everything. The yokes just literally, well, the bottom yoke is your bottom stop and the top yoke, it just sits on top. So as long as you get the same thickness of the yoke correct, you're laughing. Um, and then the holes will be there to accept the um what is it well they probably even use the risers off the xj because why not they fit we know they fit we can just what i'm going to do is make a yoke and i'll do it on the cad do it on here and then like i said there's a place uh not far from me actually that i've been talking to and uh i said do you accept custom ones and they said yeah we'll get to that when we get to that but basically i just have to cad up you'll see all of it we'll cad it up it'll be a blend between the r6 and the xj We'll send that out. It'll just turn up one day as a complete part, right? Probably we need to deburr some edges or whatever, and then um, paint it or anodize it or whatever I'm planning on doing, uh, which I literally don't know yet. Um, you know, sandblast it, might seracote it, might send it out to get anodized or whatever. Once that is done, it's literally just stick the steering steering stem in it, put some new bearings in it. And then it should just literally clamp up. Everything should just clamp up. And that is, in a sense, that is the point, right? Is the fact that just by changing the steering stem. And the thing is, the reason why I'm going to all this effort, all this, it's not effort really, it's just good fun. But the reason why I'm doing this this way as well is to show that it's really the steering, it's really the yokes that define everything. You know, like, there's loads of forums about what suspension fits an R, what, you know, what fits an R1 or I've got an FZR, or I've got a, what's the usual one, the typical one? Oh, I've got a Suzuki SV650, and I want to stick fucking GSXR650 shot with 600 shocks on it, or something. You can make pretty much most forks fit any other bike, um, just as long as you're willing to go around and do all the fucking around aligning and tweak this kind of rubbish basically as long as you just basically get all this aligned properly and so on and so forth you can get anything to fit anything and that again is like with the shock uh the rear shock same kind of thing right we'll we're going to make this frame fit the shock um i was even looking at the shock and the bottom lugs the bottom mounting that's on the swing arm we can actually, in a sense, steal a bit of... We, there's a possibility to steal a bit of length there as well. The fact of the matter is, there's loads of ways to skin a cat. I'm trying to show ways that makes it so... You'll always skin that cat. Any road. <laughs> hope that makes sense. As we go on, it'll make sense as we go on. You know, Basically, what I'm doing is I'm just mocking up what the R6 arrangement is. right? Because we know that the disc is about there, because there's only 8mm clearance anyway. I've got the caliper, I've got the fork bottom, right? We don't, the fact of the matter is, is we don't care about the stanchion and stuff because the stanchion here um, is the thinnest part and the shock bodies on the uh, exterior at the bottom, and they're easy clear anyway, we've got no problem there. Um, I know someone's going to say, if you're coming along to this new, you're going to say something like, why don't you just use R6 wheels? Right? Why not just use the axle, the wheels, all that shit, and just try and make... There's a few reasons. Number one is if you do that, that's assuming that the steering stem from the XJ fits the R6, which it doesn't. Right? Totally different sizes. Um, well, can't you just stick the XJ steering stem 
into the R6. No, you can't do that either because it's too small. It'll just fall through the fucking hole. Could you adapt it in some way? Yeah, yeah, you could, but eh, what, what's the point in doing that? It's not what's the point. You could adapt it to fit, but how trustworthy is that fitting? Because you'd basically have to... You'd have to either machine a steering stem with a fat base to fit, which would be just strange. It's an all, all of these options are strange arrangements where um, there are companies that machine custom yokes um, or, you know, for racing applications and stuff like that, right? And they're actually, weirdly enough, not as expensive. And like I say, I'm not going to mention how much. We're just going to go through it and then I want to show you it's probably not as expensive as people think it would be. All right, that that's one of the beauties of it. Any road, um, like I said, I'll show you the bills. <laughs> I'll show you the receipts, kind of thing. But this is what all of this is, and this took me I don't know half an hour to do this. It's not difficult to do this. The XGL will take me probably another half an hour. Then we'll be able to stick it. And uh, you gotta remember, a lot of this is just to demonstrate it. Normally, I just draw this down with chicken sketching. I actually did do a drawing, I'll show you that as well. I did do a drawing, which is basically just f a trace around it just to get the angles and and some of these lengths right. So this length here, and this length here, and this length here, and the angle, the angles that are here. Just to get all of those spot on, you can just basically trace around the thing and just draw key surfaces or key locations, like holes and where this plane is versus this plane, so on and so forth. Any road, I hope that makes sense, and I'll see you in a bit.